Shalom. Welcome to the weekly dose of Amuna for Shabbat Kodesh. Today we're going to talk about preparing for Shabbos and the beautiful benefits of preparing for Shabbos and what the sages of past times would do in order to usher in the Shabbos queen. And hopefully this will give us some zest and, and some zeal into preparing Shabbos this week and every week. When we talk about preparing for Shabbat, it means not only to prepare the outsiders of the home and the food, but it also means preparing ourselves. On Friday, we should really take a couple of minutes to sort of mentally prepare ourselves for Shabbat. And I know it's hard. We're all, you know, busy with our preparations. But if we're mindful that we're about to host the King of Kings, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then Be'ezrat Hashem will also prepare a proper mental sort of attitude that we're going to honor the King of Kings. We're not only doing this, of course, for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but for that that to nourish that godly spark inside of me, that pintle yid, that, that spark of holiness, I'm going to allot for myself, I'm going to envelop myself in menuchas hanefesh. So of course it's always a benefit to ourselves in that way. Just to give some examples of some of what if some of the great sages used to do it in order to prepare for Shabbat, it'll give us a boost in understanding how important it was for them to be personally involved. It's written that Rabbi, Rabbi Abahu, who was very wealth, wealthy, he used to sit on an ivory stool fanning the fire in the oven where the meals for Shabbos were cooking. Imagine that. It's written also in another place. Um, Rabbi uh, Rav Papa would braid the wicks for the oil lamps. Rav Hasida used to slice the Shabbos meal. Rabba and Rav Yosef would chop wood in honor, in honor of the Shabbos. Rav Zeira used to kindle the fire for Shabbos. It's every time and time again we're seeing examples here of how even the greatest amazing sages uh, of the time were always involved in doing something to, to do a physical deed in order to ingrain it and integrate it into their own being. What are some of the benefits? What, what, what will it bring for me? So Hazal teach us that for those who um, are involved with making preparations for Shabbat, it ensures that they're not going to forget their learning. That it's to the point where even one should interrupt his Torah studies in order to prepare for Shabbat. And it's also written that a person who really puts an effort into straightening up their house on Erev Shabbat and prepares the meals and bakes challahs, they actually draw down Kedusha on Shabbat already on Friday. And Hashem is going to repay them measure for measure, which means that they're going to be spared from the birth pangs of Mashiach because the time of the coming of the Mashiach is compared to Erev Shabbos. And because we've been preparing on Erev Shabbos for Shabbos, so too, Bezrat Hashem, we will be spared. Everyone in Am Yisrael should be spared the suffering that will precede um, Berach HaMim. It should come uh, before the coming of Mashiach. And m- last but not least, I think it's very, very important that we do remember that creating, as the, this week's Parsha, Parsha Demor, really does talk about the idea of creating of speaking, uh, creating through speech, that what we speak really has to do with creating our reality. And so let's just remember, if there's one thing that we can really do to prepare for Shabbat Kodesh that's very, very practi- practical for every single one of us to really try to incorporate in our preparations, is that whatever, th- whatever we do, if we buy something, if we prepare something, if we fix something in the house, clean a certain area of the house, we should say L'Chavad Shabbos Kodesh. And the reason why we should say L'Chavad Shabbat Kodesh is because, in particular, when it, uh, when it comes in terms of preparing our food, I items, it's written in the mystical teachings that Hashem stands above the food item. And when you say the words, L'chavad Shabbos Kodesh, Hashem sprinkles the man inside the dish of food that we're preparing. And that is what gives it that special Shabbat spice. So Be'ezrat Hashem, this Shabbat will be tastier, will be filled with more preparation, with more simcha, and to do it, to know in our minds that we're doing, having a mental attitude to understand that we're ushering the Shabbos, the Shabbos queen, and we want to welcome her, and we want to feel it in, in the very essence of our soul, and that should stay with us for the following week as well. Have a great Shabbat.